Hello. Uh, today we are going to talk about latest innovation in RGS technology, where it's heading to, how it's developing, and so on. My name is Vitotas, and together with me, you will see a team of RGS experts from Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia, who will demonstrate ESRI software innovations. Side note or disclaimer, the demonstrators do not represent a specific competence or tied to a person or country. This is just a list of volunteers who opted to be on a stage this week. The vision of RGIS is to build a comprehensive geospatial platform that supports multiple communities. In addition to GIS community that we are most of, ESRI also provides slimmed version of GIS in a form of mapping and location services to support additional communities like location-based developers and so on. And during the last few year, years, ESRI released GeoNablet systems, which takes components of GIS technology and builds standalone independent systems which, with complete workflows for urban planning, indoor mapping, public safety, and the like. RGIS supports multiple imp implementation patterns, with projects being the largest of these patterns. People do projects on a desktop or on, on a web browsers. The second one is a complex information systems that can be used by many. And the third pattern is a cloud services like RGS Online. All three patterns come together in a fourth pattern, the geospatial infrastructure pattern, which brings them together. RGS has been engineered to support all of four of these patterns together, work together. They aren't pieces thrown uh, together, but well thought out, dynamic system that brings these systems work as a unison. RGS supports three fundamental systems or usage types. On the left side, uh, so, sorry, on, on, a, on the bottom you see the system of record called record keeping is a transactional data management. We are collecting the data, keeping the data. See, it's a system of record. Second is a system of insights. These are analytics that allow us to explore or analyze data in various forms. And the third is a system of engagement. These are apps and apps, maps and apps that connect people and tell the stories to gather the information. Ezri is making all three of these systems to be able to integrate real-time information from IoT, information from imagery, from various types of sensors, and information from the field to work as a one. RGS itself is evolving. It's integrating many new innovations in data measurement, in computing, also in a science. ESRI is integrating new data sources from drones or satellites or other technologies, integrating new tools for computing, faster machines, artificial intelligence and machine learning capabilities, the ability to support cloud-native environments with Kubernetes, being able to divide software into microservices and distribute it dynamically. Every journey starts from the map. And map is a medium to communicate what's around us, to show analysis results, tool to tell the story. RGS is famous to make a nice and meaningf meaningful maps that shows more than dots on the map. And, these, and here you can see a lot of new improvements, like map graphics, offset printing, color separation, and so on. For those who are doing map production in aeronautical, bathymetrical, charting, or topographical mapping, most of the workflows are already ported to RGS Pro, and remaining work should be completed by the end of this year. But majority of us 
are making and consuming maps in a browser. With the latest version of RGS Online and soon in RGS Enterprise, you will get updated version of Map Viewer, tool you are using to create a nice and beautiful maps. New Map Viewer using more of smart mapping, more intelligent defaults. With smart mapping, you don't have to be a cartographer to easily make very sophisticated and attractive map. A couple capabilities I would like to emphasize, cartographic blending, improved clustering, performance that allows to show thousands and thousands of records. I will ask Brita from EnviroTech to introduce Map Viewer. Brita, are you ready? Hello, everyone. Thank you, Vitas. So I will tell you about the new Map Viewer. The Map Viewer we have been using for years is now called Map Viewer Classic. However, this is the new Map Viewer. To try out the new Map Viewer, I can add a layer, let's say from Living Atlas. I am searching for population data in Latvia. As the layer is added to the map, I can start to interact with it straight away. I can go further and change the style of the layer by choosing a different drawing style. Dot density drawing style allows me to um, represent a number of residents with a dot on the map. However, in this case, I want to compare the population changes over the years. So I add another field and choose a different drawing style, compare A to B. I can choose a different color ramp and you can see that the color ramps are now grouped. When I slide the value of the visualization parameter, you can see the changes in the map straight away. Now, when I click on the map element, I am able to see the changes in the population uh, in my configured pop-up. However, to improve the interaction with the map, I can also dock the pop-up to side of the map. I can go further and change the base map to add a darker background. Now, in the new map viewer, the symbology has been improved. To demonstrate, I have water and sewerage network data. I have selected manhole layer, and I will apply a custom web style published from ArcGIS Online. When it comes to labeling, you can now filter out values that you do not want to show. I am labeling water pipes with the diameter. And you can see that there are map elements where the diameter is unknown. So I can filter those out by adding an expression. So where the diameter is not unknown. I can also apply an arcade expression to disclose that the uh, label I am showing means that the value is a diameter. In the layers list, you see that the layers are grouped according to the network type. I can select the layer water network manhole and choose to move it to group water supply network, like so. All this nice functionality works across different apps in ArcGIS Online. In this case, I'm showing you an instant app, Media Map. Of course, the symbology can be quite unique. In this case, this map is a historic military map that represents 20th century attack. You can see that this map elements uh, units are uh, symbolized based on different attributes. And as I change an attribute, 
and update the information, the symbol also changes in the map. Now in the new map viewer, you can add uh, data from different sources, for example, from web service. The layer represents more than 16,000 mammal observations over the years by Nature Conservation Agency. I will style this layer by searching for a field, species in English. To get a better understanding about the observation placement, I can enable clustering. You can see that right away the clusters are labeled with the number of features in the cluster. I can style the feature, uh, the label, uh, by uh, adding a different font from a variety of new fonts. Or I can also customize the cluster pop-up. So this cluster represents a number of mammal observations. And the predominant species within this cluster is so-and-so. So now when I click on the cluster, you see the customized information. For quite some time, we have been using vector tile base maps. And with that comes the opportunity to style them or use our own vector tile layers or base maps. I have found a protected sites in Latvia layer that consists of different protected site types. I want to only add national parks to my base map and slightly change the visualization of the layer. I have disabled all other layers in this vector tile layer and I can choose to style this uh, national parks layer by, for example, adding a dash effect to the outline. Or I can also uppercase the labels. Such layer can then be added to the base map of a map. However, to improve the detail of all other base map layers, I can add the blending mode to this layer. Such base map can then be used in a story map, for example, about national parks in Latvia. So here you see the map with all four national parks. And while reading about Gaia National Park, you can of course interact with the map. Or you can add a map action to rotate the map and see the view from Toraida Castle Tower. Thank you. Back to you, Vitautas. Thank you, Brita. That was awesome. As you saw in the demonstration, RGS comes with a lot of ready-to-use data that you can use immediately and you don't have to care where, where it comes from. Base maps and imagery, elevation, address data, thousands and thousands of layers that you can have direct access to and integrate into your own work. You don't even have to think about the data. You are searching for it, adding to a map, and you can concentrate on your tasks. In our region, there was big updates on content as well. Imagery from Estonian Land Board and Latvian Algia is incorporated into imagery base map. All three Baltic countries shared elevation data, and now you can access ready-to-use one-meter resolution elevation data, which can be used for spatial analysis, and soon it will be available as an elevation base map that you can place your features on top. As well, point address data from Estonian Land Board, which is already integrated into RGS online geocoder, and Lithuanian address data, which should be integrated very soon. All the later data, local data list is expanding 
and you can be a part of this. Open your GIS services, register them into a living atlas, make them accessible to others, share as an open data. Story maps are simple geo application that allows you to mix location information with a variety of information like multimedia content, including images, videos, and even 3D data. I've seen a lot of cases when organizations are increasing transparency and community engagement using story maps. For example, sharing information about construction projects where public can visually see where those construction projects are happening, showing them on the map, interactive map, combine it or enrich it with a video, descriptive text, and so on. Embedded maps also changing the traditional workflows. Being able to embed GIS into Adobe Creative Cloud or Microsoft products like SharePoint, Power BI, and Office means the digital workforce can now make better decisions by visualizing the tabular data in spreadsheets, mapping SharePoint doc documents and workflows. If you're already using RGS Online or RGS Enterprise, you can use RGS Maps for Power BI at no cost to analyze the data. And soon you will be able to use RGS in Microsoft Teams, product you learned very well during this COVID crisis. RGS Insights is an easy to use and learn self-service analytical tool for intuitive and interactive spatial analytics. Insights takes data from almost any data source and allows you to do exploration, visual data analytics with maps and charts that are all linked, and then do some advanced analytics as well. The results of these interactions are also publishable as interactive reports across the organizations or beyond. It's focused, easy to learn, easy to use pattern that anyone in your organization can use. To illustrate this, I will ask my colleague Raminta to present how RGS Insights can be used to derive new information and answers. Raminta, are you ready? Yes, thank you, Vito. RGS Insights allows you to quickly and easily analyze your data, whether it is a simple spreadsheet or a large database. And to show you how, I have added some traffic accidents data, and since it has coordinate information, I can easily drag and drop it into my workbook and have a map created. I will change its appearance and create a heat map so that I can easily see where the most problematic areas are located. Additionally, I can review my data in different ways. For example, I can create a bar chart of different types of accidents. I can sort them descending to see which ones occurs the most. I can also create time series to evaluate changes in time. And I can also combine information in order to create more complex diagrams. So, for example, I will take the types of the accidents and weather conditions that were present at that time, and I will create a heat chart. And as you can see, surprisingly, most accidents occur when the weather conditions and the visibility outside is good. So, in a single drag and drop motion, I have discovered some insights. Next, uh, all the cards and insights are interactive. I just have to enable cross-filtering on all of them, and then I can review my data in any perspective. So, for example, I will choose to analyze accidents that are related with animals. And all my data is being filtered, I notice that there's an unusual cluster right here. So, to investigate this further, I will add road fences layer to my map, I will change its appearance so it would be more visible against the heat map. And I will zoom closer to that area. And as you can see, we have a clear connection because where there are those fences placed, we have close to zero accidents. So just in a few minutes, I have found the problem, one of its causes, and now I can make smarter decisions in order to prevent this kind of accidents in the future. 
For my next example, I have this COVID-19 report that I shared with my colleagues. And looking at this page, even at first glance, I can identify that despite most cases being reported in Vilnius region, there are more deaths in the central and northern part of the country. So these two simple maps allowed me to really expo explore my data deeper. And as we move on, I would like to show you this new analysis tool that was introduced recently. Uh, in this diagram, you can see a dark green line that shows daily cases, and it is aggregated into three-day intervals. And we can't quite understand the general trend here because we have a lot of ups and downs. So RGIS Insights allowed me to calculate moving averages and created this smooth line that really allowed me to understand and visualize the general trend of this pandemic more easily. And finally, I have added some vaccination data and designed these bar charts so that they show top five municipalities that have vaccinated the highest or the lowest amount of people. And for my colleagues to always have the latest data, I have scheduled daily updates that refreshes all my analysis daily at 10 a.m. Thank you. Back to you, Vitultas. Thank you, Raminta. That was impressive. And how long it took for you to make such a diagram? Well, as, as you have seen, I made it in a couple of minutes and it's not because just a demonstration. It's really that easy. You just can drag and drop some information and see where it takes you. Okay. We are talking about dashboards. Dashboards are making dynamic visual, dynamic visual reporting a reality. You've seen those on TV, internet media sites, emergency centers showing information about the COVID, disaster responses, workforce management, and so on. Every organization using the RGS platform can take advantage of RGS dashboard to help you make decisions, visualize the trends, monitor status in real time, and inform the communities. Spatial analytics and data science are at the center of GIS. ESRI has over 2,000 tools that support data engineering, visualization, and exploration and spatial analysis. ESRI also continuing work in machine learning and artificial intelligence and working with big data sets, millions, hundreds, millions, or billions of measurements and creating understanding out of them. In addition, ESRI has been working on integrating Jupyter notebooks interactive visual analysis technology into RGS platform for last several years. And notebooks are integrated into RGS Online, RGS Enterprise, and RGS Pro. Donatus is going to show how powerful spatial analysis and data science tools can be applied to gather new insights and how notebooks can be used to automate certain workflows. Donatus, are you ready? Yes. Hello, everyone. So today I'm going to show you a few examples of how GS analysis uh, can solve uh, many issues. Um, I'm not sure if you can see my screen. Yes, thank you. So uh, due to the current lockdown, people in Lithuania have accumulated large sums of money. And they tend to uh, spend this money uh, in real estate to avoid uh, possible inflation occurring in the future. So I have found an article in which uh, an expert in the field, a real estate uh, expert, he is describing Vilnius and dividing uh, the territory into three zones. One is so-called luxury or upper uh, price range, one is middle range, and one is low range. So I'm not an expert, but I can use my GS knowledge, my GS skills to either confirm or not this opinion. So instead of opinion, I'm going to make an actual analysis. So first of all, I need some data. So usually the data for uh, real estate uh, comes from websites like this, where you can see the properties listed uh, in, uh, in a web page. And actually, to get this data, 
I am using, uh, instead of just manually writing down the, the prices and locations, I am using uh, Jupyter Notebook. So an RGS Notebooks are an integral part of JS, uh, uh, and they allow me to make all this workflow from uh, your data source. In this case, I am grabbing the data, transforming it, and, and making a feature layer of it. So uh, Notebooks allows me to use thousands of third-party um, software libraries, use the code, uh, execute it, immediately change it, and use this next to the model builder, which is mostly uh, used for GS analysis. So in this case, uh, I have grabbed the data and uh, my, my, my workflow publishes this as a feature layer, which you can see on my portal. Then I am going to make an actual analysis. So this is the hypothesis I am going to check. I will add my data, and the data is apartments uh, presented by uh, the price for a square meter. So as you see, uh, in one single location, we can see very different uh, um, prices per square meter. Even neighboring houses can have different uh, individual features like build year, construction materials, and so on. And that makes this a little bit uh, more difficult. But I can uh, divide a price into two parts. One is based on location. As probably everybody knows that the price depends on location. And another part is the individual features of a property. So to analyze the dependence on location, I am using a machine learning technique uh, called uh, empirical Bayesian Kriging. And this allows me in just a few steps to create a surface like this. This is a prediction surface, which predicts a price for a square meter in Vilnius region based on solely on uh, the uh, listed data and location. Uh, basically, uh, not uh, looking into specifics of each particular property. Now, if I want to uh, make another model based on uh, those specificities, those specific features of properties, I can use regressional analysis. In this case, ordinary least squares uh, tool, which allows me to uh, make a model uh, to trying to explain uh, a price per, per square meter based on floor, uh, year of construction, name, name, uh, number of rooms, and so on. So the result is this. So here we ha have locations where the price is underestimated or underpredicted and overpredicted. So those red points, they present, uh, represent those locations where the price was underpredicted just because the tool is ignoring the location, but looking just into individual features on the properties. So another way to uh, look at this is to uh, use mean center tool. And the mean center tool is a descriptive tool which uh, shows me where the uh, under predictions uh, uh, are located. The, the mean center of those under predictions is this point, and uh, I can also use directional distribution tool to uh, make a standard uh, deviation uh, ellipsis. So the idea is that 70, almost 70% 70 of under predictions, they fit into this uh, ellipsis. And the mean center is that green point, which actually is located in Kudirka Square, one of the main squares in uh, Vilnius. So this is the attract, attractor point. And another way to look at the data is to use hotspot analysis to basically to make an investigation if uh, higher and lower uh, price uh, clusters exist in the data. So I am uh, going to use uh, ho optimized hotspot analysis tool, which has just a few parameters, and I get a result like this. Here you can clearly see there the cluster of uh, 
higher prices are the red ones, the lower uh, prices, the blue, and the middle is the white points. No. And the results of my analysis can either uh, be seen in 2D or even 3D. In this case, I have constructed a 3D scene in which each particular uh, listed property is represented by a black line. And that black line, the height of it is the listed price. So uh, the price can be either above or below the uh, prediction based on location only. So we can then see if those uh, properties, we have some specific um, individual uh, features uh, which change that uh, actual price from, from uh, the prediction. But I have a predictional model which allows me to, uh, to, to, to get an insight into this uh, phenomenon. Much better than opinion, in fact. Another example is this one. So here I, have, I am going to make some investigative analysis. We have two people moving in space and we have collected the data with time and location of two people moving in Vilnius. So first of all, from these points, we can reconstruct uh, tracks. So tracks are lines connecting the points and fully attributed. So these are tracks. Then I can see if there are any meeting locations. Meeting is a location where two, several people are at the same time uh, at the same place. So I am going to find the meeting locations. The meeting locations, well, we can see them. I will zoom into them. So these two people, they visited a, a restaurant next to a highway, some uh, residential area here, and spent some time uh, next to the concert hall in the old town. We will get back. Now, uh, this can be a seen not only on a map, but also on an interactive timeline. Next, I'm going to look if there are any um, caught traveling uh, occurrences. That means if these two people were traveling in the same vehicle, um, in, in, in this data we can see here the those occurrences in the yellow, where these two people were traveling together. And also another tool, uh, which is classify movement events, allows me to classify the points based on different uh, aspects. For example, this one is uh, the classification based on the speed. Are uh, these people moving by vehicle or on foot? Also, another uh, classification would be by the turning points. Are uh, people moving straight, making uh, right, left turns, or U-turns? Uh, so this also uh, gives me some insights on what was happening here. Now, uh, in this case, I have sh shown you just uh, two people moving around. But if we have even more people, maybe hundreds, we can uh, make a link charts of the peoples, of people and their meeting locations. So in this case, I am zooming in. Uh, the uh, square is a meeting location. The uh, um, circles represent people. And I can show you the, how the link chart is linked to the map. I can uh, zoom into the uh, meeting location and see what an object it is. Oh, it's a supermarket. So these people have met at the same time in this uh, location. And the same person from uh, the first group has visited the second location, which I am going to show you now. Oh, that's also some kind of an object. So that uh, uh, represents what I wanted to show you about analysis. Just a few examples to show the power of GIS analysis. Thank you, and back to you, Vitas. Thank you, Donatas. 
sounds like you're a data scientist. An amateur. How... <laughs> an amateur. Yeah, so how long it takes to be such a data scientist, to learn? To... Uh, well, it, it all belongs if you have uh, uh, experience. So more experience you get, more easier those insights come to you. But the tools will actually help a lot. I mean, if I had no uh, notebooks, I would be just writing down the property prices now. So uh, it's all about being uh, objective. Instead of opinions, we have objective uh, answers which can be quantified. And also, everything should be well, easy to, 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 to do because it's all automatic. Instead of doing manual work, I tend to do everything in some uh, kind of automatic approach. OK, thank you. Now, uh, switching gears to field operations. RGS support field operations. This means location enabling many aspects of field work, starting with the planning and managing work, organizing it, then helping people to get into the work location using advanced navigation, and it works in connected and disconnected environment. RGS also support location tracking, so you can see where your field force are, where it had been, gather historical data, and based on it, make location-based evidence decisions. Esri had extensive list of field apps. RGS Collector has been widely used for data capture, for navigational purposes was Navigator app, and so on. Based on user's request, Esri released new app which combines functionality of multiple apps. It's called RGIS Field Maps, and it's integrated app that brings tracking and mapping and navigation and feature collection into one app. Of course, some specific apps for inspections or form-based surveys will remain. As an example, RGS Quick Capture application, which allows at speed big button data collection with a minimal user involvement. Now I would like Enrica to show the demo of RGS field apps. Enrica is not able to participate live. We have limits of person in a studio. So Enrica is pre-recorded a video. So it's not live, it's a video. So apologies for this, but hopefully you will enjoy it. Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you what results you can achieve in your field work by using RGS mobile applications. In the first scenario, you will see how you can collect water transmission uh, data with RGS mobile applications, workforce and field maps. I believe that as a dispatcher, the first thing that you need to do in every work is to define tasks for your field workers. So in workforce environment, you can see already created projects with water utilities data, work assignments, and also a, a current task list. When I want to assign a new task, uh, I need to click on assignments. There, then I need to fill assignment uh, type uh, select workplace uh, on the map, for example, here, then assign this task to work, fill other information, and finally add some necessary attachments for your field work. And then just click Create Assignment. The assignment is created. Now I can see this new task straight on the map. Before I open this task in a mobile device, I want to configure another map where field workers can edit or add a new data. In this case, I will use a new Field Maps web application. Field Maps web application allows us to set more useful parameters, which ones we didn't have in RGS Collector. After opening project, you will see a content tab where you will find your map uh, editable um, layers. In Templates tab, you can see my layer feature types. When I click uh, on the type, it opens Formatting tab in the right side, 
where I can write some default uh, value, values to some um, attribute, uh, attribute fields. In form tab, I can configure how my form will look on a mobile app. There I can change my feature layers, uh, attributes, display names, for example, add some, uh, some description uh, or set this attribute field as required. I can also easily reorder my fields or just delete it if I don't need it anymore. Also, I can set conditional visibility by using arcade expressions. For example, if in, uh, in this formula, you can see that if in a previous question, a mobile worker selects status as closed, only then this question about the closed date uh, will be appear. So now I just save uh, my uh, changes to this form. In field map settings tab, you can set, uh, for example, accuracy requirements, photo apply, upload size, you can allow snapping and uh, set other useful parameters for your work. And finally, I have linked field maps project with existing workforce project in advanced tab. Now you can go to the mobile device to collect some field data. After I create a task as a mobile worker, I receive a notification to my device. I click on the notification and can see all information about this task, including attachments here. So after review attachment, I can click a start button to begin this task. Also, I want to fill some additional information into this task, so I will open uh, another application, Field Maps, to collect new data in this project. Now I will choose that I want to collect a new water supply valve here. I just click on the map, drop mm, pin here, then I click on Collect here, choose Valve Type, and as you can see, fields about job status and DMeta has already been filled based on what valve type I have chosen before. Next, I enter an asset ID. And now let's see how conditional visibility looks in real. So if I choose an operation status as open, nothing happens. But if I choose closed, I can see an additional question about a closing date. Now I click save my new feature. With the new field maps app, I can record my moves with tracker straight on field maps app. There I can see that tracker is already turned on, but I can easily turn it off after I finished my workday. This tracker integration with field maps is a very convenient option. Field Maps also allows us to save time with another integrated functionality from Collector and Explorer as added multiple features, measure or markup. Let's mark up some area. So now just imagine that when I work in the field, I might notice some violations nearby. So I can uh, mark up this area uh, leave some uh, additional comments to a work dispatcher. For example, comment like this. And then I can uh, easily send this markup to my RGS online. So in that way, work dispatcher can see all my notices and comments. After I, completely, I am completely finished with my task, I select that I need to select that this task is completed in workforce environment. Now let's go back to the computer. A work inspector can easily watch task statuses in RGS dashboards. In this dashboard, you can see where your workers are and how many of them are working at current time. Also, I can turn on workers tracking data. This data appears as dots, where I can see workers moving direction, uh, time, and other information in pop-up. Argus dashboards also, also allows us to filter data 
for example, by different workers, or I can filter this data by specific date. So RGS dashboards is a great way to watch work statuses while everybody is working in the field. In the second scenario, I'm going to show RGIS QCapture mobile app. You can create QCapture project from the existing layers or can select one of the ESSER prepared templates. There you can see an already prepared project about building inspection in a town. What can we see there? There are three buttons and each of them collects different attribute information. For example, with this button, I will write to my feature layer a value bad condition. And with this one, I will write poor condition and etc. With these buttons, I also will write a lot of mobile device parameters so that later I could see captured data in oriented imagery environment. Now let's open QCapture app in my mobile device. Click on QCapture and open a project. When I went to capture a building condition in some places, I just need to choose the button which matches a building condition. Now imagine that I am in the field and I am taking a picture of some building. After I took a picture, I just need to click on Done button. In addition, I can leave a comment or just can click skip if I don't have any comments about that building. In the map nearby my buttons, you can see how many records you have already collected. All the data will be sent to the database after a few seconds. Also, I can immediately watch all the collected data in the field by clicking list button and opening mobile dashboard with statistics. There you can see all the collected data in the list and also in the map. Now let's go back to the computer. QCapture after the latest update has a great functionality which allows you to open the collected data in oriented imagery window. There you can see all the collected data in a building inspection project. In this environment, I can choose a point in the map and see a photo and area coverage from that angle where I took a photo. Also, I can identify a place in a map, for example, in this place, and see in how many photos I can find the selected place. For example, in this case, I can find this place in a three different photos. Also, I can turn on additional coverage to be sure that these selected photos are really cover the selected place in the map. In the final demonstration, I will show you how you can collect data with RGS Survey 1 to 3 and get an automatical report to your email using Integromat. Now I open my survey in mobile device. There you can see a survey about electric poles inspection. So let's fill some information. Add task ID, task place in a map, select airline type, and status level. In the question about damages, I can select between two options, no and yes. If I choose no, nothing happens, but if I choose yes, I can see additional questions. There I can set a damage level in a different type of scale. What is interesting in the question about damaged places is that I can select those places straight on the image. It's really fantastic, isn't it? In the next question, I take a picture and you can notice that I have already watermarked this photo with this task ID number. Now I just leave my signature and select send this survey.
After I send this survey, Integromat starts rendering and I will get an automatic email with the attachment about electric pole status. As you notice, I have just received a new letter. Let's look at it closer. There you can see email title, content and attachment. Now I open this attachment and you can see that there I can find information about the latest poll inspection I just filled. It was a simple integration between my survey and email. That's all what I wanted to show you today about the latest capabilities in RGS mobile apps. Thank you, Enrica. So this concludes our demos today. Tomorrow we are going to present RGS Pro, BIM and JS integration, RGS Online, RGS Online imagery, and so on. Now we are open to your questions you have provided. So, um, okay. Okay, so the first question is about usage price for these demonstrated RGS solutions. Well, it depends. We had quite a list of uh, softwares, but I would say the price starts from the price of RGS crea creator user type. That you can use, create a dashboard. Using creator user type, you can create uh, field maps. You, cre you can use creator user type to create uh, a pure beta experience, and so on. So please approach us regarding precise demo, and we will be more specific what kind of solution you are required to develop such. OK, the next question received quite a lot of uh, likes is about military symbology. I'm not expert on this, but I would like El Brita from Envirotech to respond on this. Brita? Thank you, Vitotis. Would you read the question for me? Okay, so the question is uh, regarding new map viewer, you showed some military symbology. Does it work for enterprise and online, both, or is online specific? Thank you. So, as we know, the new map viewer uh, is available in general availability in ArcGIS Online. So, it works in ArcGIS, the military symbology as dictionary symbology works in ArcGIS Online. And uh, in ArcGIS Enterprise, starting from version 10.8.1, you can install optionally uh, Map Viewer Beta, so it will work there as well. Thank you. Back to you. Okay. The next question is about how workflow integration with Autodesk products support 3D data exchange. We are going to talk about BIM workflows tomorrow, so I would like to park this question for tomorrow to save a time for next question to Donatas. Donatas, question to you. Where could we find showed people movement location data? Is it your family movement mm -hmm. or some friends movement or you did some intelligence? Well, it's uh, me, uh, my colleagues, my friends and my family and everybody else. Uh, uh, actually, the shown example was intended probably for investigators that is police, criminalists, and so on. So this is not the data you would actually collect about the people you don't know. Well, it depends. So if you want to do so, you can create a simple app for Android or iOS, or you can use GPS tracker to collect the data about your, your, your own movement and so on. Smartwatches provide such a movement data and so on. Of course, it can be applied for COVID movement tracker. It can be used for disease spread analysis and so on. Oops, so let's, can you open? What's the next question? Okay, I see the next question is about experience in electrical grid implementation. If we can 
answer this question on the last day of the conference. We have very nice demo about utility network presentation, where my colleague Mindogas is going to present this part. So I would like to combine this demonstration with the question. Okay, the next question is about the pricing for collector license. Again, so please approach and collector can be licensed in multiple ways. It can be part of creator user type, it can be part of field worker user type, it can be part of uh, professional user type. So it's best for you to approach your sales, our salespeople and we will provide the best pricing. Uh, right pricing, sorry. Okay, since field apps now includes many mobile apps that were separated before. Oops. Will it separate apps will be continued, continuously updated? Well, the fact is that, for example, collector app, existing collector app will reach end of life by the end of this year. Therefore, I do encourage all of you to move to new field app experience. And Enrica showed very good reasons for to do so. Improved collection experience like uh, logic questions and so on. Well, tomorrow we, we, need, we need to have it better. Okay, do you have... Okay, okay, can I embed map to any application? Actually, yes. Using developer experience, you, you can embed JS maps into any device. Well, it can be a web page where you can use a JS JavaScript API experience. And recently, as we opened new developers experience to other um, libraries like Leaflet, Mapbox, and Open Layers, as an example. If you are working on mobile app development, there is a APIs for Android, iOS, and so on. So I suggest you visiting developers.esri.com, uh, developer.js.com, where you can find all information. If you need something in addition, please approach us, and we would be very happy to share in additional information. Okay, and I believe it's the last question, if it's not answered. Is your application related to apartment market and valuation also implemented for property tax in Lithuania? Well, Donatus, do you have answer to this? Or is just illustrative example how it could be applied? Well, in fact, it's both. It's also an illustration and also a solution. And basically, uh, the example I was showing you was based on the uh, real estate listed at a single point in time. And uh, as it changes, the phenomena changes as well. It's not like a solid, uh, as in, uh, in, in rock. It always is changing and the uh, the result is basically a, a model which represents uh, the situation as it exists in a single point of time, because it's based on uh, data uh, from one single point of time. But of course, it can be used uh, for uh, evaluation purposes, because it is a model which represents the, uh, how the location is affecting uh, the prices. Of okay. course, it's, it, it, it could be used even today. Okay, I see, Donatas, you are very popular today, and we received another question for you. Could you please list of tools that you use for your presentation for analysis using RGS Pro? Can you do it offline? I can like do you provide it, a list? I can provide the list. Uh, I have used maybe six or seven tools. Krieging, OLS regressional analysis, optimized hotspots, and also about the movement. I was using uh, uh, recreation of tracks, uh, meeting, uh, detecting meeting locations, and categorizing movement points. 
So these were tools. I have also used uh, additionally mean center tool and uh, directional distribution tool just to uh, analyze the results of OLS analysis a little bit more. Okay, so I believe this is the last question. If I missed some of them, we, will pro we promise to respond all the questions in a written form immediately after the conference. So thanks for your patience. I believe we are on perfect timing. And Solus, back to you. Okay. Thank you very much. This was the excellent presentation. I really enjoy everything you showed.